Hey everybody, this episode of Hold Backstage Live was filmed in Alabama's oldest, continuously serving community theater, the Hold Backstage. I sit down with Britt Burns to talk about his career as a videographer, different bands that he has played in and is currently playing in, having to move to Texas with just a few days' notice, getting to film events such as Furnace Fest in Birmingham, and our experiences here on stage at the Holbeck Stage Theater. Britt's experiences playing characters such as Danny in Greece, the minister in Best Christmas Pageant Ever, and a little character called Sweaty Eddie in Sister Act in 2022. I want to thank Britt for filming and handling the video production side of this episode. We wanted to bring you a conversation done with really great equipment and uh, at really great production value so that you can see what we, we can accomplish and what we want to accomplish with show sponsors and individual support of the show. And if you want to support Holback Stage Live, email us at holbackstagelive at gmail.com or call our office here at the Holback Stage at 582 Show. Thank you very much and enjoy my conversation with Britt Burns here on Holback Stage Live. Oh, man. So we, 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 t- we talked about this, what, like month ago maybe Mm -hmm. and here we are yeah so i'm 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 excited to be sitting down with you because we've known each other a while yeah and uh, a long time (laughs) (laughs) through i mean and so much life has happened in between right then and now but when we played in a little band called bass capo (laughs) (laughs) in high school (laughs) was that um was that the first band you played in I can't imagine it probably, was. Probably, yeah. That's probably the first like full band besides just like playing at church Yeah, um, that I played in. And I actually reference Bass Capo a lot. Do you? Yes, all the time. <laughs> um, I think I actually referenced it. So our, our Volts, the band I'm in now, we played uh, a show the other night and in a rehearsal gearing up for that show, there was something where Zach was trying to figure out the chords to something on his bass. And I was like, why don't you throw a capo on it? And he like laughed. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm serious. We it's had a, a thing. We had a band in high school <laughs> and our name was bass capo. Yeah. And here's why. So yeah. Lee, Lee was not, uh, Lee Brazelton was not afraid to use a capo. Right. For, I mean, <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't play bass. I didn't know why it was helpful, but right. I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you just play drums then? Did you play drums at church too? Before uh, I played, I played bass at church, but I played drums okay. just for, I so guess, you knew all about the capo on the bass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm so proficient in capo on the bass. Yeah. So yeah, you played drums and bass capo with us and we actually recorded yeah. an album. Yeah. We recorded like a worship Camp album. Naiati. I got something in my pocket. We recorded like a worship album uh, with Jeff Tennant out at Camp Naughty. Yep, yep. Stephen Page mixed it. Yes. Who has gone on to do big <laughs> things in Kentucky. We even made like a with like the a, a little CD out of it, I think. Mm-hmm. We like yep. gave them out to people. Uh, well, yeah, we probably, it was probably illegal to sell them. But <laughs> <laughs> right. At, much less at school. Yeah, like yeah. At, We're like at slinging the discs. high school. They're like, what are y'all, what are you, what are y'all doing? <laughs> 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 Nothing, don't worry about it. Right. It's fine. <laughs> Um, people ask for these, so <laughs> we were just hustling, hustling some music <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Oh man! So uh, then, then I guess we didn't really keep in touch right after high school. When yeah. Did you? When did you move to Texas? Uh, I moved to Fort Worth, Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth area around I would say May of two thousand six. Okay, so in the spring, like a one year after we graduated, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I went to I went to Snead for a year, and um, found out real quick that I still hated school as much as I did in high school, <laughs> <laughs> and was terrible at what everything I was doing. And uh, I was basically failing every class. I was working at a music store, uh, Railroad Bazaar. They used to be right on top of the mm-hmm. mountain by Walmart. Yeah, and. Uh, I got fired from there because I was not selling enough and I was mostly just playing all the instruments and not selling them. <laughs> so I got fired and um, a guy we went to school with, Adam O'Shields, who's now in town again here. Yeah. He was in town and was like, hey, I work for this oil and gas company out in Fort Worth. 
um, I think he was, I think he was home on like a Friday and told me that and I was, I, we were hanging out with the pig or something. I don't know where we were, but <laughs> he was like, if you can be there on Tuesday, you can have the job. And so I told my mom, I was like, this school thing ain't working out. So I loaded up everything into my, my Jeep Wrangler and just took off. Wow. Yeah. Just, it, it's like if, if you could be there in a week. Like, if you can move to Texas oh, this in a week, was, you can have the job. Yeah, this was like, he told me on Friday night, and he was like, if you can be there oh, Tuesday, oh, four you days. can have the job, yeah. <laughs> so, I basically told my teachers, like, I won't be back, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and told my mom. Of course, she was like, I, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I was like, I don't either, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. So, I loaded everything I had into a, a Jeep and headed to Texas. So, what was it? So, it was the, a- The job. So, the job was, and I, I had a couple of jobs at this company. Um, the company was started by um, some guys from Alabama, and basically, they the only way they hire people is if you knew someone from Alabama. And so, wow. like, I I just happened to know Adam, and they would bring mm-hmm. you in and train you up. Um, and basically, what I was doing is I was going door to door, knocking on people's doors, saying, "Hey, we're going to pay you X amount of money per acre that you have for us to like see if there's oil or yeah. natural gas on your property. And if okay. there is, we'll drill, we'll drill and you'll get like 25% of, some, of like royalties <laughs> or something like that. I hated Man. that because I'm a horrible salesman. After you didn't sell any instruments at Railroad right. Bazaar, that, like, they put you know what? basically <laughs> another sales job. So I'm like knocking on the door and people are like, hey, and I'm like, hey, uh, can we like see if there's some gas and oil can in your property? Your and they're like, no. I'm like, okay, see you later. <laughs> you know? I hated it. I hated it. So I quickly changed from that role to a role where I was um, mapping out drill rigs and pipelines like on a computer. Okay. So um, that was more so that was more my speed. Yeah. I, I didn't last very long in the door-to-door thing, maybe like a few weeks. I did the door-to-door thing <laughs> one time. I moved from Nashville to Missouri for, it was supposed to be for like the summer Yeah, to do a door-to-door security system sales thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they put you through the whole interview process. Yeah. I'm, it's, I'm, I don't think these companies are the same. But this company, you know, they, they put out the ad. You answered it. They put you through the whole process. Even right. though they were going to hire you because yeah. you were yeah. a warm body. Sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. And so uh, they make you feel like you, you got chosen, like you got hired. You move out there. They've got your housing set up and everything. Yeah. And then you're, they just drop you off in a neighborhood and you're knocking on doors all day. Now that that's very similar to how this company was. And if Adam O'Shields was here, he would tell you the exact same thing. <laughs> we had a, there was an apartment complex full of, um, when I moved out there, I was, I was 19, maybe no, I was 18. When I moved out there, I was 18. So they had an apartment complex full of probably 50, 18 to like 23 year olds. Mm-hmm. So it was basically like moving into like just a giant college dorm because they paid all of our rent also yeah. for like the first year we were there. Yeah. They would pay your rent. <clears throat> so it was like a madhouse. But <laughs> <laughs> That was my other question. How did you, I mean, you moved out there without a place to stay or anything, right, but no. I guess they, they so So Adam had, uh, he had an apartment there already mm-hmm. and he wasn't even there. He was on a job for the same company, but he was like, out in the field in like Shreveport. So on the way to where I was going, I had to stop and get a house key from him <laughs> and then meet some random guy at the apartment complex. I had no idea where I was going. Like I didn't know anybody. Like I didn't. So Adam oh, wasn't even there. Like I, I just showed up blind. Yeah. Like, Hey, I'm here for a, a job. I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm the so, guy. Yeah. Yeah. That, you I'm know, a, the other guy told right. you about. <laughs> I have a, I have an apartment key. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was your one, legitimate like claim i have a key right like, right I'm supposed i to could be like here. stick the key in the door <laughs> and that proved that i was like the right guy that i was coming to, to apply for a yeah. job man these did, did y'all have um roommates like you yeah or did you have your own room or no i uh actually there were i think that i want to say there were four of us living in a three-bedroom apartment wow um, and i only asked because in my similar experience they they just randomly paired us up oh yeah so it was yeah. like right living in the same room with this guy I didn't know. Yeah. Which is the same thing that happened when I went to Lipscomb. Anyway, I, I didn't know anybody going there. Sure. So I did kind of the random roommate thing. Yeah. And it kind of worked out. I mean, he wasn't ter- he, he wasn't bad. We just didn't like connect really as friends. We just kind of right. cohabitated, I guess, Yeah. for a semester. And then I moved out the second semester to get with these uh, different guys in the dorm. But 
I mean, <laughs> that that whole time period that I worked at that specific company, I only worked at that company for two. I was in Fort Worth for six years, and I worked at them for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And man, that whole time was a blur. We we worked seven days a week. Wow. Um, we would we would work like. I would work like 60 days on and then I would get like two weeks off and I would just okay do that cycle over and over. Um, and then like, you know, we were a bunch of like 18 to 25 year olds and making like crazy money. I mean, they were mm-hmm. paying us all kinds of money to do this job and I still don't know why, but so. Plus, did you get commissions for property? Yeah, you found yeah, or yeah. Whatever? So it was, I mean, it was like, I, I mean, I don't know. No one knew how to handle money. So it was like, <laughs> what are we doing this week? <laughs> yes, literally. I mean, we would party all night. We would like all, like when I say there were like seven people in our living room that all worked, we all worked together. So we would go out and yeah. party and then we'd come back to the room and set like three alarms in that room <laughs> and all get up together and go to work the next morning. And then we just repeat that process every wow. day. And it was just, it was a mad, it was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> when you work, essentially two months and then have two weeks off perpetually yeah. i mean that's that's pretty good off time yeah yeah, yeah. But seven days yeah. a week for two months is yeah there was brutal. It, by the time that two weeks rolled around i was ready to like chill yeah you know yeah so man that's wild yeah uh, see that's why i love doing this i learned so much <laughs> right right yeah uh, and we've we've never talked about that sure because like we reconnected much later sure after y'all moved back here yeah yeah um but yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I love hearing people's stories and all the different things you get into, different experiences you can right. have. Um, it, it prepared me for adulthood for really quick, you know, because yeah. I was also a contractor at the at the time and had no idea what the IRS was or taxes okay. or any of that stuff until they came knocking my door and like, hey, hey man, all that money you've been where blowing, you, been? you owe us some of that. <laughs> so there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of life lessons learned through yeah. that experience. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so, and Ellie and I were still dating. Mm-hmm. So when I'm, when I left here, she was in, she was a junior in high school. So you were dating when you left here. Yeah. So uh, you had a, co- like a girlfriend, a connection and you moved to Texas yeah. with three days notice. Yeah. <laughs> what did she say? Okay. You told us about what your mom said. What yeah. did Ellie say? Oh, when it was you were tears. Like, hey, it you was, know what? It was tears and <laughs> man, it was nuts. But we did the long distance thing for, let's see, I was I was there for two years before she moved there. She went to Lipscomb and thought that she wanted to yep. go through and have get a, um, a music degree, but had no idea how freaking hard it is to get a music degree in college mm. with music theory and all that, all the it's stuff nuts. you have to learn. I studied music my first year there, yeah. and it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. So I, I know, it, I know yeah. what, where she's coming so from. So she, she was miserable, um, and so we got married, and she moved out there, and- she went to hair school, didn't do anything with music, but, um, yeah. So, so then we were there for, we were there together she does for four now, years. Though. No, I yeah. mean, not like she sings and she's always sang. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I remember she was even going to try to learn piano before she went to school there. And <laughs> it, was just, it was such a pipe dream, I think for her. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I, we I don't, all have those. Yeah. At some point. Oh, for sure. 100%. Um, and I don't, yeah. So anyways, that was, that was a crazy time. Yeah. So y'all, uh, y'all, y'all did the long distance thing for a little while. Yeah. Two years. And then was that when she moved out there or did y'all break up? I mean, I don't, this is probably not. I think we broke up <laughs> a, I, once or twice and then we just realized like, I don't know why I was asking about, <laughs> we just realized like that we were supposed to be together. And so yeah. she, she, moved, she, we got married, she moved out there and started going she went, actually went to cosmetology school out there yeah and actually found what she likes doing which she doesn't do it now but she really enjoyed it then You're still and, in the dallas area then yeah yeah so we were there for a total of i was there for a total of six she was there for four um and that when we had mac in 2011 we were only there for three months after he was born and then we moved mm-hmm. back here mm-hmm. and i actually moved back here under the pretenses and i won't name the company that I had a job, mm-hmm. and when I got here, I didn't have the job. Ah, uh, with a newborn. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, so that was that was interesting. Um, it is interesting that you your move to Texas for a job with less 
promises probably oh yeah <laughs> like oh so right many unknowns worked out 100 percent. and then moving back here yes didn't <laughs> no yeah that was that was a roller coaster so i helped i helped my father-in-law reese which is ellie's dad i helped him open what is now cafe 336 mm-hmm. and i waited tables at rock house at night i did Same. that for several 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 months <laughs> yeah i don't i guess we, we didn't y'all moved back here in 2011 yeah okay i did too so April 2011, I moved back from Nashville a week before the infamous tornado outbreak oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. 2011 okay. here okay. in Gunnersville. Um, and I was like, man, if there was ever a sign, this might not have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. But no, it, it was, I mean, I was glad to be here and be able to help, you know, my family and and whoever else, you know, that was really having a hard time then yeah we um my grandmother's house had 17 trees on it oh, from that man. storm she was in buck island right yep yeah that's so crazy we uh we had our work cut out for us there yeah <laughs> um but yeah man that's I, I i've never seen anything like just the i don't want to say devastation because i think mostly people were right Safe, just destruction from that just crazy destruction but, yeah, and just everything being shut down destruction man yeah i um my another house that's that is a member of our family extended family i won't explain to everybody what the relationship is but like <laughs> another of, of our family houses um my uncle called me and he was like hey how bad is it because i got to the location before them yeah and i was like man i, I don't want to sound like i'm exaggerating but realistically, probably 95% of your trees on this property are down. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it was all old growth pine trees. So yeah. they grow like yeah. right next to each other, uh-huh. 30, 40, 50 feet high. <laughs> like, gosh, I mean, and that's, that's probably low. A 30 was really low for like a pine tree. But I mean, I, they were all down. That's and I, I was hearing natural gas escaping. Like, I, you know. It was. I've never seen anything like it's it. That's crazy. Yeah. So we we moved it here back here in December of 2011. So most of the okay. work had been done as far as getting all that out. But I remember mm-hmm. driving over there at Buck Island just because I knew yeah. that it happened. Well, I had to hike in. <clears throat> oh yeah. The first time I went over there to try to assess the damage yeah. and find people. Oh right, right. Like <laughs> I had we we drove as far as we could. And then I had to hike. And I'm, when I say hike, I mean, there wasn't a trail. Yeah. I was walking on trees. Yeah. Climbing over trees, right. under trees, trying to follow the road. You like couldn't a, see the road. Like a movie. You couldn't <laughs> see the road. Yeah, it was nuts. And and w- I'm sorry, I, this is a side note. That's fine. But um, uh, when I got to my grandmother's house, she wasn't there. Couldn't find her. She had gone up the hill to my uncle's house. Yeah. And um, when I did find her, I was walking back to her house with her. And same thing, climbing over trees, walking on trees, trying to find, you know, a way. Yeah. And uh, I made a comment about how a tree fell and pulled up part of her driveway. Yeah. And she was like, oh, no, that's bad. Whose driveway is this? Like, it was so bad. Like she, she didn't know tell. we were in her own oh, yard. Oh, my goodness. Like the, and not because she didn't know it's because the, it was so unrecognizable, right? <laughs> and that's, I mean, I, that I remember that vividly. Is her? She literally didn't know we had already crossed the road and gotten into her yard wow. because there it was just trees. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, nuts. I wouldn't know how to handle that, especially in like our small town here. It's just so beautiful and just serene. Just yeah, for something to be destroyed like that. I know. It would be took, nuts to oh, see. You still, you still see effects from it in some ways. Yeah. People, you know, everybody in that neighborhood and on that street just, just had to restart, sure. you know, plant new trees or whatever. And yeah. you still see that. They're starting to mature now, but like, right. you know, it took a while to get that cleaned up. <laughs> I bet. That's crazy. <laughs> um, did you start videography and photography in Texas or yeah. back here? So um, through the different companies that I kind of worked through, uh, in Fort Worth, um, I, I moved into a schedule that allowed me to work on some of my creative stuff. And I've always done creative stuff since as a, a kid. Um, mm-hmm. And I actually would carry a video camera around with me in high school every now and then and like film like we would just do dumb stuff like riding on skateboards or 
whatever. I mean, we would just film dumb stuff, but I enjoyed like putting that kind of stuff together. Yeah. And I didn't, had not really picked up a, a camera since high school. Um, then I kind of got in, into photography and shooting like portraits of people. Then I kind of slowly got into wedding photography and that's about the time we moved here. Mm-hmm. So video came after, it came after all that. Um, once we moved here, like I said, I was, I was working at a cafe during the day. I was working at the rock house at night, trying to wait tables and to make money because our, with our newborn yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no job. Um, so I was like, well, maybe this, you know, maybe this could keep going with my creative stuff. So, um, I got into the wedding scene here doing wedding photography and I did that for five, five years, I think. Um, and kind of had my other like main jobs here and there that would help support us while I was kind of figuring all that stuff out. And then it got to where Marshall County just got so saturated with wedding photographers that I just, I mean, it was just so hard to get a job. And so, um, my camera at the time happened to do video. So I just like, well, let's try this. Yeah. So I started video and stuff and I would just offer stuff for free all the time. And that's kind of how I got into doing videos. Like I was like, I can't, the only way I'm going to be able to get my name out there in the, in the creative space, as far as doing video is just to offer a bunch of free work. Mm -hmm. That's a going to help me figure out what I'm doing and and get me experience. But then it's going to get my name out there as far as putting, people can see stuff that I'm making. So I started doing wedding videography and I did it for several years and slowly and surely just built up my skill set. And, um, I like to say a lot of times I would fake it till I make it, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, where let's say a corporate gig would come up and they would say, Hey, do you know how to do this? And I wouldn't necessarily lie, but I'd be like, I can make it happen. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, we would have that we'll scheduled it out. <laughs> and by in the, in the few months leading up to that job, I would just get my camera out and I would figure out how to do whatever it was that we were talking about. We were going to do. Yeah. And I did that so much to where I was just trying to, I was just leveling myself up every time, you know? Yeah. I would just add something else to my utility belt, you know, as, as far as video or creative stuff would go. Um, and I think that's kind of how I just kind of worked away to where I am now. Mm-hmm. And it was a ton of YouTube. Um, oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, I was sitting, you know, I would work all day at the, at the cafe, go to the rock house, get home, pull up my laptop and just cram. Like I would, I would watch YouTube videos of how to do this or that, or how to film this or how to do audio or something like that. And so it was like just all that repetition. And then under, under a deadline. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And then whenever I had an, an off day or, or some time that I wasn't at the restaurants, I could actually pull up my camera and go actually shoot something and, and fail a bunch. I'd know what not to do and know how to do it. So it really was all just, a lot of hard work and, and just figuring it out as I went. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, 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 I mean, th- there's something to be said for people who pursue something that they're interested in. Yeah. And you, you don't have to be an expert no. to start. Mm-hmm. Just start. Yeah. And do what you're interested in. Look for or accept projects that, yeah, that you think would be fun or challenging. Right. And learn as you go. Right. I mean, that's, that's, you know, there's a ton of people who you talk to now and you think, man, how did you walk, just walk right into this yeah, position yeah. or job or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, it I wasn't didn't. necessarily walk. I didn't necessarily walk into it. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of learned for several years. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and, exactly. And refined and, yeah. and got a new skill and did something else. Right. And, yeah. It so was it, a lot of scary times. Cause I mean, we have five kids and <clears throat> you know, they're all on, they're all 11 to five right now. That's our, our ages. So, mm-hmm at the same time we were having kids. So like, yeah, there were a lot of scary times where we didn't know how we were going to pay our power bill. You know, there was just times that were just rough, but I just knew in my heart that that was what my passion was. And that's what I was just God had destined me to do. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I just kept, I just kept running and gunning. I, I, I just, I remember times where I'm just like, I'll just, I'll rest later, you know, like, <laughs> Yeah. It would be it'd be three a.m. and I'm editing a video to get it out real quick before I had to go to the restaurant and yeah. So stuff like that, you know, was just well, that doesn't work for everybody. But it takes somebody being uh, who's I don't like hustling every day. Yeah, getting up, doing the work, putting in the time, mm-hmm. regardless of you know just the just the relentless pursuit. Yeah, will get you there. Yeah, sometimes for sure. You know? I for sure. Um, you, you know. I, th- I think more so these days, p- 
people are starting to see the light as far as you don't have to go to school to, mm-hmm. to have a profession. Yeah. You can be trained in something. You can be, you don't have to go, go get a four-year degree to be successful in this world. Right. If you have a skill. I, and I tell people that are, that are like high school age, anybody I can talk to that's like, I don't know what I want to do the rest of my life. Obviously you don't because you're an 18 year old and <laughs> your free, your prefrontal cortex hasn't even developed yet for you to even know how to decipher something like that. Yeah. But they have these, you know, these counselors are like, you got to go this route. You got to go this route. Here's your prerequisite. You got to take these four classes before you can get in what you really want to do. And, you know, it doesn't have to be that hard. If, I mean, I'm not saying that school's not, is not for anybody. Obviously there's trades that have to have that mm-hmm. amount of knowledge, but, um, hard work and, and just f- figuring out what skill you love to do can really pay off in this world. Yeah. Yeah. And people especially with the way people do business now or the, the way that you can even offer products or skills or services yeah. online. Right. Um, there's so many platforms where not even like a physical, I mean, I, you and I can be talking here right? and then we can leave here and do a job that affects somebody in a different part of the world, different state for sure. Or, you know, we could even work for a company that's located in a different state. Yeah. We just do something for them here. Yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, more and more the job market is just open Yeah, if you show up and are competent at what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And the access at earlier ages now, I think, mm-hmm. for for kids to learn certain trades or skills mm-hmm. is so, so much more available. I wish I had done that. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I mean, at, we, had, we had opportunities in, in yeah. high school with Marshall Tech School right. or with Sneed yes. to go ahead and get into specific uh, classes or like get go ahead and get a jump on college credits yeah, or right. like the trades at the tech school. Yeah. And I don't know why I didn't think like I should do, I, I didn't see that as something, man, I got to get this under my belt at the time. I thought it was something available for people who... I don't know, were interested in that or knew that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. I mean. I, I feel like when I was in high school, it wasn't really, that really wasn't pushed as far as. It, yeah. That, it, this is an, uh, an, an avenue you could go with. Mm-hmm. In my mind, when we were in high school, it felt like that was like the backup plan kind of a thing. Like try to get into college and yeah. if you can't, well, there's this trade school, you can learn how to do a trade or something. Sure. You know, <laughs> but. I, I don't think growing up that it was really pushed that that should be sought out as equally as a college degree. Yeah. You know, which is absolutely the best option for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the, the amount so of many roads, the amount of things you can learn on YouTube, I'm telling right? you <laughs> everything that I know how to do as far as video goes I learned from there, like every, like 100% of it. Well, I wouldn't say 100%. Part of it is me going out and just turning on my camera and figuring things out and knowing what doesn't look good or sound good yeah, and what does. But what led me to those things was YouTube. And 100%, all of my my education came from YouTube. So did you, even, even in Texas or like before you moved back here, have you always sought out a musical outlet like if you always found a band to play yeah, in or yeah. produced your own stuff pretty or, much yeah um when i when i lived in fort worth i was in a band called traveler and we played around like regionally around texas like austin san antonio dallas sometimes we'd go up to like tulsa and stuff but and you played keys for them right i played keys and i played guitar for them and i sang like some background vocals but yeah i always yeah music's always been like i mean if it, it it's I, I would say it's my number one passion but i don't make money doing it or i don't do it full time so it's <laughs> i guess it's not my number one passion but um it's definitely high up there for me um yeah. music's always been a part of my life even as a kid you know before i could even play an instrument singing and listening to music and just exploring music as a kid was was yeah. very important to me and how many was traveler the only band you played in yeah in texas yeah you were I would there do six some years like, you said i would do some like acoustic stuff by myself but I mean, yeah, I, was, I played in that band for, I, I played for that band for like two or three years. Okay. Yeah. We travel around, around there. That's and cool, man. Yeah. It just like weekend stuff or did you play multiple nights a week? Or? Uh, it got to, we were playing about two shows a week, maybe three. Um, were the same venues calling you back or? Yeah. You, it, we would, yeah, we would go to the, a lot of the same places. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's interesting because I played uh, with a guy in Nashville for a really short period of time. Um, and we played just like the same handful of bars all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we never did travel or anything. It's just like, you know, playing when they had dead time. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's just like, oh, right. you play guitar? Sure, come on. <laughs> yeah. And I've always played in church. Church is where I kind of started my musical career. Um, even as a kid, I went to like this singing school that my grandmother put mm-hmm. me in that was through a church in like Boaz, I think. But um, I've always played in church and served there in that way. And um, But music, yeah, music's always been a part of my life. Even, even now, like we have... Um, I'm in a band called Volts and we mm-hmm. have it's number one dad band in uh, Gunnersville yeah, what I heard. which is kind of funny because we played a show for the Spring Fling a couple weeks ago yeah. and in the paper it said um, number one dive dive band I think she under, she misunderstood when Ellie told her dad <laughs> band so it was kind of confusing but yeah we are a dad band because the only time we can rehearse is after we got our kids in bed yeah. and then we go and like jam for <laughs> a couple of hours for rehearsal Um. But all those guys are so super talented that I play with, and you know I kind of handpicked them mm-hmm. when I when I first thought about this this project. Obviously, I didn't I wasn't looking for anything full time, but just some guys that I can jam with. We can play a few shows. Um, so all of those guys, like I've intentionally selected those guys because I knew they were better than me, <laughs> and so I was like, "This is gonna make us all, you know, it's gonna make this whole thing sound better." <laughs> so yeah. I just surrounded myself with like those 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 musicians and they are so good and um it it's it's something we started it five years ago and it's something where every year or every couple of years covid kind of threw a, a wrench in a, a that with every, as with anything else but every couple of years or every year as long as our schedules kind of line up we'll find like a time during the year to like rehearse for a month and then we'll play like three shows <laughs> yeah and they're like all right well that was good hey you i know? mean that you know it makes sense as for a dad band. Yeah. That's, that's the time you get. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially, I don't know about the other guys, but you're, you know, being a professional and you, you yeah. got to travel for work sometimes yeah. and, and projects around town. I mean, you, you know, yeah. you got to work it in when you can. Oh yeah. And we all have so such busy schedules and I just sent a text one day. I was like, if we don't do this now, we're never going to do it. I mean, cause we're all, we're just yep. going to get busier, yep. you know? So we all just kind of carved out time. And I think, once we did that and we played a show or two the other guys and myself where it was like we didn't realize how much we needed that that yeah. outlet in our lives so um maybe we'll play some more shows <laughs> yeah that's cool i mean have y'all i know y'all have played in gunnersville i've seen you yeah. a few times here uh monogram jam spring flame uh-huh. stuff at 336 yeah um private parties i'm sure <laughs> yeah 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 we're trying we're trying to add to our private party list <laughs> yeah uh have you have you played el- other places with Volts? No, besides just just, just, here in, just here in Gunnersville, yeah. So yeah, yeah. local. Um, we're trying to get on. We're trying to get on the free concerts <laughs> this summer and fall. So oh, the Mountain Valley yeah. Arts, yeah. yeah. So put in a plug for that. <laughs> Mountain Valley Concert Series, yeah. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we could work that out. Yeah, I'd I'll also work. like to play at like Papa Doobie's. They have a nice spot up there to play. Yeah, they're uh, new Levi's building. down here would be fun to play at. So. Just got to make some connections. Uh, the building that the new pizza restaurant's moving into pizza has that place. Uh, so my boss actually owns that building. Okay. Yeah. So I work for a company called True, and my boss Scott Smith, um, he runs the company, and he uh, he bought that building that the brick was in when it was going under. Yeah. And so they used uh, there used to be a space. I haven't seen the the renovations they've done but there was a space downstairs for yeah. our band to set up so yeah yeah cool. i think they're going to revive that i think scott my boss wants to revive that like through yeah. them so yeah nice i'm, I'm sure that's going to be coming back so everybody watch for volts uh show <laughs> announcements at pizza Ed. <laughs> yeah right right when they open yeah which is coming soon i'm i've I hear. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it looks uh, like it's coming. They along. they just had some bumps in the road with like um like draining and stuff in like under the road yeah. like city stuff that gotcha. they had to like figure out. Gotcha. But they're getting close. Nice. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. That's not the first pizza place that's been there. No, Terry uh, Terry's Pizza. Is yeah, the one we had there? a Terry's. Yes. I think we might have had another one before that. And now I feel like that one had an arcade in it. Yep. Like we, I think one we were in like did. middle school maybe. Yep. One, one of the restaurants there had an arcade at one was, point. Was it Terry's when we were in middle school? It maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They so. did have an arcade. Yeah. And Pizza Hut had some arcade games. Yeah, they closed. Yes. <laughs> Where are all the arcade? Mama's Pizza was awesome. It was up there uh, where Moses now, and they yep. had to shut down because of like plumbing yep. stuff. 
And so now we got to go to Pints and Pixels yeah. to play arcade right, games, right? <laughs> <laughs> which I'm fine with. Yeah, I, I camp out at Turtles in Time and just <laughs> beat the crap out of those purple dudes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, shell shocked. <laughs> so, did you do shows here at the whole backstage before, like during high school? Or after I, you moved back in 2011? After. I, it's funny. If, if Diane Du Bois watches this, she um, cast me as the lead in Big River when I was in ninth or 10th grade. Mm-hmm. And, um, the one that you did at A-Reb? Or the one that we performed at the A-Reb? I think that's theater. where it was because I think they were doing renovations here and it had, yeah. to, be, it had to be done there. Yep. So she cast me as a lead. I went and tried out and she cast me as the lead in that. But I turned it down because I had soccer. So I was an idiot, but I was like, ah, sorry, it's going to mess with my soccer schedule. I thought I wanted to do it, Yeah, but I she's never that, let me yeah. forget it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I remember that show. That's the only show that I auditioned for, for the theater here, um, before I, we moved back here. Um, Ellie's done them. She's done the oh, shows yeah. here since she was a little girl. Yeah. But, Lifelong um, passion. Yeah. I did theater in high school. I did like a couple shows there that were fun. Um, but I think the same thing with that. I had I played. I was very passionate about soccer in high school, so mm-hmm. it usually nothing really trumped it. Ever everything. trumped it. <laughs> yeah. I got you a water too. I've oh, been thanks. drinking mine, but oh, I got. Thanks. I found these uh, in the green room. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> I trust. It. Should be fine. <laughs> um, but since you moved back, was Greece? That your was first, the first show. Yeah, that was the first show that I that I did back so here. That like tw- that was twenty eleven or twenty twelve, wasn't it? Uh. That was 2015. Oh, boy. Okay. I was off. I'd forgotten that Kristen and I were already married for that. Maybe 2014 is one of those. I think 2015, 2014, 2014. I'll believe that. Because Adler Adler was born 2015 right after, because that was after Greece. Right. Yeah. So right after it was the summer of 2014. Right after the drive-in movie scene. Yes. Right. So that was nine (laughs) years ago. That was nine years ago we did that show. Oh man, that's nuts. Yeah, that was a fun time. I hadn't seen that uh stage show before we did that. So the character I was cast Same. as, I wasn't familiar with cuz oh, right. I don't they might name him in the movie, I'm not sure. Right. But um it it was a, it was a really fun show to do here. I mean, yeah. I love seeing how this this space that we're in right now can be transformed for yeah, all kinds of yeah, it's different really cool. productions we bring in. Yeah. And then you did, I know you did Sister Act, but what, what did you do in between? What have you done oh, after Greece? I did, um, I was, well, the only part I can think of is that I was a minister in the uh, best Christmas pageant, pageant ever. There you go. Yep. I, was that. I remember that. I did that one. Um, That's a, that shows a common thread with a lot of people that uh, I've spoken with because, um, I think I've said on this show before that was my first show here at, oh, really? at the whole backstage when I was twelve. Yeah, so ninety it'd been the ninety eight version. Oh, of wow, okay. best Christmas pageant. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody has touched that show in some way that is it seems, the theater. Yeah, yeah, it seems like that's a common thread of all, like everybody has been in Christmas pageant at one point, right? <laughs> in some capacity. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoy. I really enjoy musicals, but I also enjoy comedies. So yep. comedic roles, I like any kind of comedic role. I really enjoyed playing the cop in Sister Act because it was just like this dorky guy that was a nobody or he thought he was, but like secretly behind closed doors, he felt like he was like the man. And he has this dance scene where he transforms from yeah the dorky cop to like this alter ego guy. Disco kind yeah, of guy. And then back, back into his shell. So that the way was, y'all did that was genius. Dude. <laughs> Cause I, if, if you saw the show, Brit was wearing three costumes. Yeah. Yeah. And the top two were tear away. Uh-huh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you had like a tear away cop costume, yeah. which I don't know where that went. That's yeah. probably been repurposed for I, somebody's I made professional those, dancing I made those career. costumes. Well, I mean, I didn't make the costumes. I cut the costumes in half. Yeah. And I Velcroed them. Where yeah. they would rip off. But nice. That was fun. That was a fun. That was one of the funner shows. So I've, you had I've a done. tearaway cop costume on top. 
mm-hmm. a disco outfit underneath that yeah. with like a white shirt and a vest. Yeah. And then that tore away to another Back to cop, my cop costume. costume. <laughs> so, it, so it showed the transformation from him singing during the song and then yeah. going into like a dream sequence where he's like this disco like cool smooth guy. guy he th- he wants to be yeah the guy he wants to be and then it's almost like the t- the last hair away pulls the disco off to reveal it was all like kind of a dream yeah you know and he's like and back it, to all normal. the lights go back to normal yeah. man that was that scene uh-huh. is so well done yeah. <laughs> and that song is so good yeah it's a great I love song. that song. it's such a good song and i man running sound for that show I got to be here every single night, and I never got tired of the music in that oh, show. no. Y'all did a Same. great job. Yeah, that was... It, just like Grease, that was such a fun show to be a part of. Not only yeah. for the... Just how great the show is in general, but just the people mm-hmm. that we worked with. Yeah. Um, Diane's that just a makes wonderful such a difference. Director. Oh, yes. Every show... I mean, the only shows I've been in are, are Diane's, and, I, and mm-hmm. I enjoy it every single time. Yeah. I'm in one of hers right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> so uh, that'll we'll be doing End of the Woods uh, June 16th. Yeah, I'm excited to see that one. So hopefully, um, depending on when this comes out, everybody should get tickets to End of the Woods Yeah, June 16th. For or, sure. If you missed it, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a minute to get these from concept to <laughs> publication. Oh, right, right. No worries. <laughs> Um, so videography back here. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about um, Furnace Fest. Okay, because you filmed that how many times now? Uh, twice. Okay. Yeah. And there's one coming up this summer. Yeah, in September. Okay, kind of. Yeah, going into the fall. Yeah. So your how many bands typically show up? So the first one I filmed was two years ago, and it was kind of like a reunion show. So Furnace Fest, the first Furnace Fest, I may have this wrong. I think I think I got it right. Was in two thousand and one, um, and it was a way for all of these different rock bands from different. So rock music in general is like other genres where there's a lot of subgenres of this of 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 rock. And it was a way to bring all those subgenres together in mm-hmm. Birmingham, um, just to have this huge festival. And there were like Christian rock bands, there were screamo bands, there were hardcore bands, there were just alternative rock bands, and they all had a place to come and play together in this festival. And the festival was at Sloss Furnace, which was a really cool venue. Yeah. In, anyways, did they did the the people running this uh, Furnace Fest kind of retrofit it for? this event like was it just kind of abandoned before uh in some ways yeah uh they had a they had a stay the, back then i i want to say it was just one stage and it was like in it was called the shed mm-hmm. so it's like this just giant aluminum pavilion you know covered thing that's kind of slants down to where the stage is and it was just like this wooden stage wow um and now they have three stages but the other the other two are just kind of like temporary they put them up on property but yeah um man it was such a killer time because a lot of the a lot of the bands that I filmed were bands that I used to listen to like back in high school. So when I got there the opportunity to go film it, it was just such a fun experience because bands that I I listened to and knew all of their songs, I was be able to, I was able to stand on the side of the stage and film them doing yeah. their thing. You know, kid I was to them all through high school, a lot of them. Um and it's funny how I got so when I found out the show was happening, I found out Furnace Fest was, was coming back and they were doing it. Um, a guy had just posted, a guy named Johnny that I got connected with, he posted on Facebook that he that they were bringing that back. And I was like, man, that'd be so killer to see that show. And uh, another guy that I'm connected with that was a mutual friend of Johnny's, he was like, hey, I know Johnny, I can get you connected. So I was like, oh, cool. So I just he gave me uh, Johnny's contact and I just, I just mentioned him like hey dude I was like if I can just get backstage passes I will film all of this for free and just give you all the footage like I don't care I'll just bring my camera I'll film everything everything I can I just want to be backstage so I can like just right. see these guys in person like up close and personal so it ended up being like a paid gig though like I went down um, they actually filmed a documentary of the whole Furnace Fest that I was a part of and I got to film all the interviews and um, I got to sh- film the, the whole festival Man, um, talk about a like a like a connection. I oh mean, yeah, 
It was wild. You were just trying to be there. Oh, and yeah. And all of a sudden, you're involved in filming a documentary yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it goes back to that thing, man. Sometimes, as as especially in creative space, if there's something you really want, sometimes you got to, you have to make some sacrifices. Yeah. And I was willing to like, to be in the spaces with those bands and to point my camera at them and film them. It was worth just some backstage passes. Like I didn't care to get paid. Like, mm-hmm. but it turned out being like a paid job. Like I actually got paid to do it. Yeah. Just like a, a professional. And then you got, you've got the experience, you've got the connections, yeah, you've right. got those guys who are familiar with you. Yeah. And then yeah. there you are. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just the relentless pursuit. Yeah. Puts you in the right place. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, those I've actually, you know, I actually enjoy when I get to see those guys, when I go down there and, um, obviously the music is always good. So I, I'm, that's just a, Man, a whole other thing that's come along that I had no idea I'd ever be a part of. Yeah, you know. I, were you able to make any connections with like the bands you were talking about? Like, I made I made some connections filming? with some of the guys that film for them. Oh, so, okay. so when these bands would these big bands would come in, they would have a guy with them usually that's filming all their content. So I would just sure. make connections with those guys. Like I, I've made connections with several of those guys that are just in my space but do it for music for yeah. those bands. Yeah. So I keep in touch with all those guys. And so that, that's, that was a cool, a cool connection to make. Is that how you've gotten, now you went uh, out, maybe it was a few years ago, went out to Texas to film a music video. Yeah. Yeah. Was that part of that connection or some? No, I see. I, that was a friend that Texas. I knew before, Okay, before I even got into video. And he, uh, he's a musician. He's been through a, b- a bunch of bands and, um, he's in an instrumental band right now and he was like he had this crazy he always had crazy ideas for videos <laughs> like when I when I knew him he was like dude it'd be so cool if like this spaceship came down he would, I mean it would be crazy stuff and I was like man yeah I'm, I'm right there with you it would be cool you know? <laughs> yeah and so he just had this crazy idea of, the, of filming this music video in a castle and like this ravine that's down in Texas and I was like yeah I'm, 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 I'm on board you just get me out there so I went out and we filmed uh, two music videos, two music videos in two days. We filmed one on location at a place and then we filmed one in like a studio, but man, that was fun. Yeah. Sorry. I just jumped over that from, uh, from talking about Furnace Fest, but what, um, so are you on, on stage during Furnace Fest or side stage or yeah, all, all over, over the place? Yeah, all audience, over. mainly like, side stage, just getting like footage of the bands. Um, but then I also had like a setup where I could set my cameras up in this little warehouse that we found there and like actually get interviews of the bands. Like we were asking them about Furnace oh, Fest, cool. about playing, you know, some of these bands had not played together in 10 years. Like when the reunion of the festival came around, some of these other that guys had thing. already moved on. Like they're not even, even playing anymore. So there were like some reunion shows that were happening. Um, and, uh, and like one of my favorite memories is there's a band called Stretch Armstrong and they had not played in 10 years <laughs> and they were back together for this festival yeah. and they were like they were like the all-time favorite band from Furnace Fest, Fest way back when and it was such an energetic show and Johnny the guy that I'm that I got connected with that kind of got me hooked up with doing the job he was standing beside me on the side on the side of the stage he's like are you gonna stage dive I was like I don't know I guess I like, have to now he's like here hold, hold, put your camera down go so I just ran and I took a dive off into the into the crowd. <laughs> oh man! And I crowd surfed back. But what's funny is the second year, which was last year, I took Mac with me and my son Mac with me. Mm-hmm. He's he was ten at the time. Um, I thought, what better? He he's also a musician. He plays drums mm-hmm. and he listens to rock music just like I do. And I was like, what better? Bir-? It was around his birthday. I was like, what better birthday present to take him to Furnace Fest with me, so he can see all these bands that we listen man. to together, and then. That very same stage, he went and staged of off of it. That's awesome. <laughs> the second year, and I got a video of that's it. Wild. That was, it was fun. The only true Texan in the family, Mac. Uh, that's, oh yeah, and he tells people that he's like, I was born in Texas. <laughs> it's like he got like he's got some street cred or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not even from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, Furnace Fest was a, that was a fun time. <clears throat> yeah. So, were, were there any bands there that you weren't familiar with? Oh yeah, that, like, a lot of them. I mean, because there were uh, there were probably fifty to sixty bands that played. Oh okay. Over the course of three days, and I didn't know I didn't know half of them. But like, have you made some discoveries? Yeah, from yeah. That? Oh like, for sure. Anytime I, I hear sure. new music or I see uh, some live music somewhere or whatever, somebody that I just happened upon, like yeah. maybe by accident. Yeah. I'm like, Man, these these guys are good. Yeah, <laughs> there were definitely some of those um, that I even listen to now because of that. And yeah, that was really cool. 
um, and and there were some genres of rock that I didn't really even listen to, but mm-hmm. it was enjoyable to go just see that because I just yeah. love live music. So, well, it's different seeing it live for some even a genre that maybe you're not as familiar with or that you don't really like that much. Yeah, yeah, it's different seeing it live. Like you can appreciate yeah. what it takes to do it. Oh, for sure. As you you're see it happening. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like if you would just want to listen to it in your car. It's, it may it's not, not do anything thing. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. to actually see them do their thing that changes w- it. That was cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a fun experience. What about your music stuff? Oh, buddy. <laughs> uh, well, kind of like I mean, we play together now. Yeah. at church. Yeah, um, which I have never done because I grew up in the Church of Christ. Oh, right. Which is totally a cappella right, music. Right. Right. Um, and. I always played music. I bought I bought a Fender guitar when I was in seventh grade mm-hmm. with some money that I made, just like I don't know, mowing grass or whatever birthday right. money. Right. So I went I went and bought. I remember this specifically. Mom taking me to the store. Uh, I think it was a store in Huntsville, and uh, I bought a guitar in a case. And the case I got, I still have today too. And it was a hard case that apparently you could run over with a car. And it would be fine, <laughs> but we haven't tried that. That's just what it said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, and uh, that guitar has some age on it, but it's I still play it today. Um, and I always played, I guess early on I played guitar mostly, and I played piano, but not really well. Like I, I was kind of doing piano lessons, yeah, and right. I didn't think that. I don't know. I, I didn't like it. Yeah. Because I was made to go do the lesson. Not yeah. like they're, they're forcing me, but like, you know, it was, it was that setting maybe that I didn't like uh-huh. as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so I didn't really get into piano much until I went to college and I was studying music. I had to take piano there as part of my curriculum. Right. And I got into it a little more because at the same time I was taking music theory and stuff mm. and we, we had to write music. Yeah. As of like fr- my first year Freshman. there, <laughs> they were like, here, yeah. we're going to learn music yeah. theory and you're going to write a piece uh-huh. and you're going to get one of our piano majors to play it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so it was, it was the whole thing, but I got more into piano there and then maybe back into guitar. Like I said, I played with that guy in Nashville, Kurt Stacy, um, for just a little while and then moved back home. I played piano as a way to like relax or to deal with things when I was frustrated Mm -hmm. or, um, or I was, I was in like a, I don't know, kind of a stressful place. I would play piano to relieve that. Right. And I mean, it it was, that's the only thing I did with it, but it was therapeutic, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, then a couple of years ago, I got a text from my friend Celeste and she says, Hey, don't you play piano? And I said, yeah, kind of a little bit. She was like, well, we need somebody to fill in at church like this Sunday. It was a couple of days away. Yeah. Could you do that? I said, I just said, sure. Yeah. Because I, you know, I thought it was, I wanted to. Right. And I've been playing ever since, <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but I love that format because it's, it's, uh, it's a creative outlet mm-hmm. that kind of is rejuvenating at the same time. Yeah. And um, I love that we get our music and we can prepare, you know, for a week and then we show up and we do it Right. as a group. I mean, we don't practice throughout the week as a group. We yeah. show up yeah. having practiced on our own yeah. and just get to just get to enjoy that time together. Right. And that's, man, it's, I love it. Yeah. It's great. So, and we have some more instruments like Graham uh, that I've inherited from family members or uh-huh. whatever. Um, I got into the mandolin for a little while. Oh yeah, yeah. And then we got a trombone from my grandfather. He used to play in like he played in high school, maybe a little in college. And then Graham can blow that trombone, and it sounds great. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't know how to make the notes sure. or whatever, but he can play it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. Just, uh, he's walking around the house just like <laughs> uh, Sydney hasn't gotten it out yet <laughs> I don't think she's realized <laughs> about the trombone that's great but yeah he loves playing around on them too but um, 
I, oh, I did play with uh, Mockingbird Lane for a little while. Oh, yeah, yeah, you remember yeah, them? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they, I'm sure they still play some, but the Mosleys, yeah. um, I forgot how I got started with them. It was 2011 also, mm-hmm. or 2012, because uh, like Chad was playing guitar, Lee yeah. was playing bass, um, and I think there was already a keyboard player, but he maybe was unavailable some. Yeah. So they got me to play keys for them. No, I played guitar for them. They did have a keyboard player. Wes, I think was his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I played guitar for them and sang a little bit. Uh, and that was fun. I mean, they, I remember sitting in for one show with them one time. Yes, yeah, player, you played, played with us. <laughs> uh, and their their the style of music they played was what I loved. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. It was classic yeah. rock and uh-huh. like Steve Winwood, right? Um, the Beatles played some Eagles songs. Yeah. Uh, Skinner. I mean, it was all it was all fun stuff to play. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we played. I remember we played a a high school reunion, and I forgot what class year it was but at the at the senior center <laughs> at the rec center down there and uh that was fun but i mean I, I didn't play with them a really long time yeah but it was um i enjoyed what we did yeah for sure i mean just like you said it's it's that it's an outlet yeah that you don't know you need sometimes yeah but and it, it, it mine hap- my outlets like that my musical outlets that i take on like that tend to happen at times when I really need it, you know? Yeah. Just whether it's stress or things I need to get off my mind or, you know, stuff like that. It's just a good outlet to like a, a stress reliever. Like you said, when you played, mm-hmm. when you played piano, that was a stress mm-hmm. reliever. So, and, and that was, I was playing an old, um, upright that sound, it had a sound to it that, um, I think we got it from my grandparents' house it was a piano that was in their house growing up that yeah. I remember playing and my, and I, I remember hearing my grandmother play it and I didn't know that she played. Yeah. Um, but she, you know, all, all throughout the time my mom was growing up in their house, uh, they sang, they played, they, they, music has always been a part of our family too. Right. And, um, so I think we got that piano from her, had it for a few years. Um, and then, when we moved, when me and Kristen moved, I was like, I can't, <laughs> we can't take this. No, <laughs> that's usually when you see free pianos online on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Well, we found somebody who, whose kid had started taking lessons yeah. and they were into it and yeah. they, you know, they bought it. And, um, I was happy to know it was going to somebody who wanted to learn and pursue that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it, like I said, it had a sound to it that was just like, I don't know, like a historical sound, but yeah. you know, just one of those old the strings had been adjusted several times yeah yep. you know just the the upright body of it produced that sound too, yeah so. yeah but it i mean i love playing it that's what graham as soon as he could reach up and hit the keys <laughs> yeah. you know so it's it's amazing how many free pianos you i mean i remember when craigslist was still a thing mm-hmm. before like scammers and creepos um you could like get you could go on there and just like search free and there would be like yeah. a piano there. There'd always a piano there. Yeah. People, they're so heavy. Well, we used to have like three or four pianos here at the theater because people would just be like, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. The whole backstage needs one. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Which we are grateful for. But when you get that many pianos collected, it's like, <laughs> where do they go now? We don't need these. We don't need <laughs> they're so big many. and they're heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's one actually underneath us in really? the orchestra pit. Really? They just never got moved out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But this uh, this part of the stage is removable. I don't know how many pieces it is, but you can take it up and have the orchestra pit here. And we do plan to use it this remember, next season. I remember a show or two that that happened here. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I, I always know John Harvey was part of it. Oh, yeah. Because sure. he would do music here or he would do it over at um, the high school when they did mm-hmm. shows. So I do remember that being here and that them there being like live music. Yeah. Which I totally enjoy. Like what well, we will have or we plan to have a live orchestra for at least one of our shows this next season oh, for our 50th so awesome. anniversary, yeah. you know. Um I I I don't know, we may have it for two shows, but we are we are going to use it because yeah. it's been too long. Everybody wants to to see a live yeah, orchestra yeah. in a the theater again. And I understand and, that the ease of using tracks is just 
Yeah. It's more affordable. It's easier, but the ambience that it just, that mm-hmm. it adds to the, the, the magic that it adds to a show is yep. just so good. Oh man. It's, it's almost like you have two shows going on. Yeah. Cause I, man, I loved when I lived in Nashville, I went, um, uh, to the Shermerhorn to see, uh, I don't know what the name of it is. The Tennessee orchestra. I don't, I don't remember, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they, I mean, I love just watching them. Yeah. And we've done it down at Birmingham for, um, the movie series that the Alabama Symphony Orchestra does. Have oh, you ever yeah, been to yeah, one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we went, we've seen a few of the Harry Potter shows that they've done. Oh, so they man. play the movie. Uh huh. And the orchestra on stage plays the score plays to the movie to oh. as you watch the movie. That'd be awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really, I've seen them do Star Wars. Oh, man. Um, and like I said, we've seen maybe two or three of the Harry Potter ones. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. If yeah. you get a chance to go what do an that. Experience. Yeah. That'd be awesome to Just, see. And I love, I don't know, I've I've listened to movie soundtracks. The Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack. Have you ever just yeah, listened to it yeah, by yourself? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, I would I would go watch that. Yeah, yeah. On stage. Man, that's great. There's so many different, all that music sounds the same because it's got to keep the same theme throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you hear those little, uh-huh. when you're just listening to the soundtrack, you hear those little differences uh-huh. that they stick in there. Like, I don't know, that. Like I said, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of is one of my favorites because yeah. of the, all the different types of intru- instruments and mm-hmm. sounds they try to use. So mm-hmm. um, that may not be a popular opinion, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Yeah, Caribbean, Caribbean. We can have that whole argument. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates, pirates. <laughs> I don't know that many people say pirates. Pirates. <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> Pirates. <laughs> Oh man, but I man, I, I appreciate you coming, yeah, and hanging out, and um, I've had a blast helping produce this yeah. episode, and it, it's going to be really good. I am looking forward. Like I, I said, we're going to use this orchestra pit in our fiftieth season, yeah. and um, the show announcements will be coming out really soon. I know they'll be out before you see this. So, uh, for when we open. With Bright Star, mm-hmm. man, I'm I'm really looking forward to that show. If you're interested at all, yeah, not just you, but yeah, anybody, anybody in performing, please watch our social media, our website for yeah. audition opportunities. Um, that show, we're going to open our 50th season with that show, and Red Mountain did it recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, it hasn't been done around here very right, much right, that I right, know of. Right. So we're really, really excited to show yeah. that to people and to bring that to this area. Mm-hmm. And that show is so, I mean, if you ever hear Jan Price talk about Bright Star, she she knows the story so well and just tells about all the the elements of the story, like the emotional swings and like, right, you right. know, there's... It, it, just come see it. If you don't want to be in it, come see it. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. I think it's going to be a really, really powerful show for us to do. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Beauty and the Beast is going to be fun. Yes. Yes. So I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, and we also have uh, fundraiser shows during Christmas. We're going to do uh, Elf Junior. Oh, fine. And uh, Tuna Christmas. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Greater Tuna. I don't know. These two guys, I think two of them wrote it. Maybe one of them wrote it. But two, it's only two guys that perform the show. Hilarious. Because they, ba- they base it on like a fictional town in Texas. Okay. And they play, they each play about seven or eight characters a piece. Oh, fine. And they have all these different interactions. And oh, like, gosh. There's a gun store owner. I'm and for that like one. a little church lady. <laughs> I mean, they... They both play men and women, uh-huh. like several characters. Oh, wow. And it's it's really, really funny. And A Tuna Christmas, they played they played off of a greater, like Greater Tuna, their first show. And it's the same town, same characters, but they just got a Christmas story yeah. intertwined. <laughs> and it's, golly, it's funny. Yes. Um, so I mentioned Elf Jr. Yeah. Uh, Bright Star... Uh, Lion in the Lion in Winter is um, a show Johnny 
Brewer's going to be directing. And it'll be in February, maybe? January, okay. February. And Elf Jr. And Kristen uh, and John Davis will be directing Elf Jr. Yeah, that'll be so good. Yeah. I'm excited fun. about that. You got to, you, but it's, we can't be in it. You got to be 18. Oh, right. <laughs> or younger. <laughs> we can do the other ones, though. <laughs> yeah. That one intrigues me about the, the two guys. That that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Look it up. I yeah. mean, they've got, YouTube's got a really good version of it. Um, and man, I can't, like, their characters are funny, but yeah. the way they wrote it's funny, too. Like, yeah. it starts out kind of like this two guys sitting down to do a morning radio show. Uh-huh. And so they read through the news and, like, you know, like, well, another cow got out, <laughs> but. They caught it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just like just good writing. Yeah, and they they like don't really have props. They change costumes for their different characters, mm-hmm. but they don't really have props. They kind of pantomime everything. Okay, so he, they're like pouring the coffee and <laughs> eating the breakfast and stuff. Yes, yeah. that they these two guys just did a really good job. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one. That's awesome. But all right, that's awesome, man. I had fun. I did too, man.